Hey guys, it's Agosti Tilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really excited because I'm going to continue the videos with ray tracing in Unity. In today's video, we're going to be basically picking up where we left off on the previous video, where I walk you through how to set up ray tracing. We look at various effects and what I'm going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at a new effect called the HDRI Sky. HDRI stands for High Dynamic Range Imaging. We're going to be looking at it and how we can actually use it to take our scenes to the next level. So I'm going to be walking you through how to set up the component how to actually apply a QMAP and what QMAPs we can download from the Unity Asset Store. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so today I'm really excited because I'm going to be showing you how we can set up what's called HDRI with HDRP. I showed you in the previous video how we could set up ray tracing and that's what we're seeing and looking at right now. If we go to the game view, you're going to see that this just looks beautiful. We have ray tracing materials with recursive rendering in here. And you can kind of see the character right here and also there's reflection on the ground. We're also getting the reflection from the, the actual HDRI sky, which is the forest. So I want to show you from scratch how we can do something like this. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how this looks when we play the whole scene. So I'm going to go all the way to my timeline and then set it at zero. And then let's go ahead and hit play so you guys can see how everything looks. So, Everything is using HDRI, so I wanted to show you the difference between the previous shot versus, you know, this shot, which obviously looks more realistic. And I really like how the characters and the environment is getting, you know, the reflection from, from the actual HDRI sky. So if we, if we get back to right around here, I wanted to show you also, like, if we get closer as Adam, who is the character name, gets closer to the sphere, it's going to start reflecting on it and you guys, you guys can kind of see it here and then a little bit right here. We're also seeing the reflections from the sky on this sphere. So that's what I wanted to do is just put those spheres in there. So when the character gets around here, we can also see some of him showing on those and also, you know, how beautiful everything looks. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how we can set up this from scratch so you guys can actually, you know, add QMAPs. And I also want you to know that I'm going to be using the Unity HDRI pack, I already downloaded it. So this is the one that I recommend that you try it out so you guys can, you know, create a scene like this or better, better than the one that I created. So already download it, go ahead and download it and get it ready. And then I'll just set everything up for you to, to basically follow through. All right guys, so this is a scene and how it started. I, I only had a procedural sky and there's really no Q maps assigned to the HDRI component. So when you start with a scene, you're going to have either a procedural sky or just have a sky that Unity gives you by default. So if you go and make sure that you watch my previous video because this is kind of a follow up to, to that video. I'm going to put it in the description of this video. But if we go into the volume, I'm actually going to, let's go ahead and put the inspector right here so we can focus on this area. So if you go into the volume, you're going to see that we have, you know, the volume itself. We also have a visual environment. And that visual environment determines, you know, what kind of sky we're going to be using. You're probably used to the sky being on the camera, which is, you know, the default sky that we're all used to. But if you want to use something cooler and, you know, using the HDRP power and the volume and the effects, you can use something called the visual environment. And you can add that by just clicking on add component. And then, you know, once you add your volume, then you can click on add over right. And then that add over right, it's going to have the visual environment. So by default, you're going to have something like this and it's not going to have, you know, it's just going to use the default that Unity, the Unity has. But if you want to use procedural sky, you can also add a node from procedural sky. I already did that on the previous video and it was actually already added to the scene. But if you want to just add it, all you have to do is just add that and then just enable some of the settings in here. If you want to change the color, you can also change the color. But this video is for HDRI, so I want to focus on that. So I'm going to click on out of array. And we're going to be searching for HDRI and go ahead and select it. So now that we have that, you're going to see that we have these HDRI options. It's going to be asking for a QMAP. I already downloaded the project that I show you. So if you, if you look at the download files, you should have also the HDRI components. And I don't know exactly, oh, here we go. I was going to say, I don't know where it puts it, but it's clearly in here. And all the files are in there. So what we can do is we can go back into the volume and we can also assign we can now assign a QMAP. You're going to see that I'm going to have multiple QMAPs. And right now we won't be able to see anything because I haven't really assigned the HDRI to this component. So let's go ahead and do that before we do that. So now that I have this component here, you're going to be assigning the type of sky, which is going to be HDRI. 
Once I do that, you're going to see that something is selected. The reason why the forest is selected is because I had selected the wood, the Moir wood white balance. So we can go here and let me actually just rotate this up. And we're going to be just changing them so you guys can see, you know, all the ones that are available. And, you know, if we wanted to have San Francisco, you can have the San Francisco bridge in there or, you know, all the other ones that are available in here. I'm going to use this one. I really like the, you know, the forest look. So I'm just going to be selecting that. Another setting that you also have and just, you know, take a look at this right now because it looks really cool. And we're going to be fixing the, the, the actual noise on the reflection. I'll show you how to fix that. And then if you want to change the intensity, you can enable this. And it'll give you options if you want to use multiplier, if you want to use locks. I'm just going to leave it as exposure. And then in here we can say, okay, you know what? I don't want it to be as, as strong or maybe the exposure. We can just do something like 0.2. I think 0.2 is fine. You can also change the rotation if you didn't want to, if you didn't like what you had. You can change the rotation of that. And you can see how everything, you know, rotates and is actually changing on real time, which is, which is actually pretty cool. So I'm not going to be using the rotation. I just, you know, uncheck that. And then also if you want to update these either on change, on demand, or in real time, I'm just going to leave it on change that way, you know, when we change the settings, everything changes. I think this is, this is fine. So now that we look at these, the, we have some weird, you know, dots on the, some noise on the reflection and we can fix that by a couple, doing a couple of things. We can go into recursive rendering and this is going to have the ray length. And if I were to move this down, you're going to see how the ray is just going to start, you know, capturing as we increment it. And that's because the length is too low. So we need to increment it because this is a large scene. The other thing that we can also do is we can change the depth. You can see how the depth is changing. It's not really, you know, affecting half of the spheres. And then these ones, you really don't see anything. So I would play with this number just to, you know, make sure that you get it to a point where you like how it looks. I think if we do something like this, I think it looks good because we're getting some of the spheres in here. And yeah, I think that looks great. And Actually, and if you go to the game view, you're going to see that things are going to look better because we're just getting a snapshot in here. If we go to the game view, it's going to be rendered. So that's how you basically set up a, uh, an HDRI sky. Let's go ahead and look at the timeline and I can show you, if we go back here, we can just take a last look at how this is going to look. So I'm actually going to hit play and we can see it display in real time. And we should, there we go. So we're seeing the sky right here and I'll see Adam coming in. We should see Adam reflected in the spheres. Also, one part that is really cool, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop right here. This is a shot that I really like. The reason why I really like it is because I can see Adam, you know, reflected on the ground here. You can also see the sky from the forest. We're also seeing some of the props in here, including Adam, you know, simulating here, and also how the recursive material is doing what is that's best, right? This is recursively re-rendering, like you can kind of see a sphere in here, we can kind of see, you know, Adam in here. So this is really powerful stuff. And, you know, I'm really glad that Unity put this together and gave us a tool that they gave us because it makes it super easy to set up. So it's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions about this or anything related to HDRI, let me know. I'm going to be putting the link to the HDR package in the description of this video. So thank you very much, guys.